This show is brought to you by International Coffee Farms, where you can own a parcel in your very own cash-flowing specialty coffee farm in Panama. Sustainable income through offshore sustainable agriculture. This is Cashflow Ninja, episode 107 with David Sewell. Welcome to the Cashflow Ninja, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Now, here is your host, MC Laubscher. Hello everyone, MC Lobshire here and welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Ninja. I have a great show for you today and very excited to have back on the show my friend David Sewell from International Coffee Farms. David was a guest in episode 33 where he spoke about the very unique sustainable income opportunity through offshore sustainable agriculture. International Coffee Farms offers a real estate-based specialty coffee farm ownership opportunity in Boguete, Panama. If you missed episode 33, I would highly recommend you go back and listen to it since I think you would find it extremely valuable and educational. David is going to discuss and share information about another unique sustainable income opportunity through offshore sustainable agriculture in Belize. This involves an ownership opportunity in cocoa farm, parcels, and much, much more. For our new listeners, my guest David Sewell is the Managing Director of International Coffee Farms. With an extensive business background in private equity and venture capital, David's attention is focused on offshore hard assets in Latin America that offer real growth potential with a sustainable income and turnkey management in place. David strongly believes in the future of specialty coffee, for example, as one of the most likely asset classes to realize spectacular investment gains over the next 20 years. I'm really excited to talk to David about international coffee farms and this new exciting opportunity he's offering in Belize. And listeners of the Cashflow Ninja can download a free report on this income opportunity in Belize at cashflowninja.com forward slash Belize. Please share your feedback and thoughts on today's interview. You can let me know your thoughts on Twitter by tweeting me at MC Lobsher or by email at info at cashflowninja.com. And please remember to join our mailing list by signing up at cashflowninja.com or texting Cashflow Ninja, one word, all capitalized, to 44222. That's two fours and three twos. Have you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Are you interested in real estate investing and don't know where to start and how to get the results you want? For more valuable information to get you started, visit JoinOps Properties at JoinOpsProperties.com. David, it's great to have you back. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's very great. It's very nice to be back. Now, for our new listeners not familiar yet with International Coffee Farms, can you please give them an overview of the International Coffee Farms, your philosophy, principles, values, your model, operations and acquisition strategies, and what opportunities you provide for investors? I sure can. I'd be very pleased to. It's very simple here. In a nutshell, we acquire underperforming commercial coffee farms in Panama, and we turn them around from an underperforming commercial coffee farm into a well-performing specialty coffee farm. Specialty coffee is the stuff you pay 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars a pound for in the store. Commercial coffee is the stuff you get in a Folgers can for five bucks. So we take those farms that are generally undermanaged, undercapitalized, uh, operated by generally considerably older farmers who no longer have a family that are very much interested in digging in the dirt anymore, and they're off in uh, South Beach in Miami or wherever uh, doing their thing, not interested in farming. So dad, approaching 60 or 70 or 80 years old, um, needs to sell his farm probably to provide for the kids, his wife, or anybody else in their family. So those are some of the farms that we're targeting and acquiring here. Um, once we once we acquire them, we subdivide them into half-acre parcels, and we offer those half-acre parcels as a real estate 
investment to individual qualified investors. So you can own a, a half acre parcel in your very own specialty coffee farm. Uh, in this case, for in coffee, for as little as eighteen thousand dollars for the half acre parcel, with an average annual re- yield or an internal rate of return of somewhere in the eleven to twelve percent range a year. So that's how we do it. We have bought and turned around and are turning around um, a combination of eight farms right now in the last two years. Uh, the ninth one is on the drawing board and we're ready to pull the trigger on the acquisition of that, which will put us in the business of about having 200 acres of coffee farms under management with a uh, hundred or so individual owners owning the, those half acre parcels, either one or two or three or four. The benefits to the, uh, the features of this are that you own the land. So the security is in for you in the land. Uh, you will have a deed issued to you in the na- your name or the name of the entity you hold the property in, uh, in a titled operating coffee farm in Panama. So deeded property in your name, security. Secondly, it's turnkey managed for you. So everything is really done on that on the basis of turnkey management. Uh, the coffee is, uh, the farms are required, the farms are subdivided, the deeds are done, the coffee is, is grown and or the new farms are planted. Uh, we have a, a, our own processing mill here, so the coffee is then harvested and processed. It is produced in micro lots of coffee uh, to be sold to individual coffee processors, usually roasters around the world in the form of a green coffee bean. Uh, That uh, exportation sales and handling of all that is all done for you. So it's a turnkey operation which provides a sustainable passive income. So that income is passive uh, because of the turnkey management. It's sustainable because it's coffee. And coffee's been going on for a long, long time. Don't think it's going to change anytime soon. The demand for specialty coffee way outstrips the supply of specialty coffee. So the fundamentals, uh, the economics of the business are strong and uh, continuous and uh, sustainable. We have a Another pillar of sustainability as well as economic, which we have to make money, of course. Um, We also have the environmental sustainability pillar, which we try to make sure that we leave the property better shape than we've got it. So that's why we're turning around these farms from inefficient, undercapitalized, poorly operated farms to highly efficient farms that pollute less, use less um, input, uh, products to generate the, the coffee and are environmentally sound. Most importantly, we have a socially sustainable pillar that we focus on regularly and directly. We provide 20% of the operating income of the farms is taken off the top and put into an inviolate pool of funds that are available for our workers for the people who generate the coffee who make the money for our owners who are investors that own the real estate so it's very important to us that we spread this around to be able to provide good honest work good solid wages that are long term we pay a little bit higher than the industry average in most cases we provide social security benefits in full we provide medical and pension benefits we provide housing um, lots of things that go into the socially sustainable part of making sure that the lives of our coffee workers are continuously improved we have a silly little saying in our marketing terms that say that says happy farmers equals happy coffee in a nutshell that's what we do Oh, fantastic. Yeah, there's a lot of value being created for all of the stakeholders, which is fantastic. And around it, the second most traded commodity in the world, an over $90 billion industry. And you guys are busy with a lot of exciting stuff. Let's talk about this new and very exciting passive income offshore real estate opportunity you have available. Can you please share that with my listeners? What we're doing now is taking the successful business model, which we started in 2012, um, proved it and tested it in Colombia, um, added Panama to the mix in 2014, and have uh, been successful here. 
we've created, uh, we've, as I said before, we're just about to acquire our ninth farm in two years. Um, we have harvested our first harvest, uh, sold entirely the first harvest. Uh, we have created deeds for the earlier uh, farms that we acquired and are plugging away with the government every day to keep doing that um, as we go along to provide deeds to everybody. Um, we sold the crop. We made our first distribution uh, a few months ago uh, on time. Um, on budget, we were within 94% of our target of the amount of money we would distribute per half acre parcel in the first year. And keeping in mind, we had to make those projections two years before we started. Uh, we came mightily close to what we wanted to do, and we're happy with that. So all the I's have been dotted and T's are crossed. The boxes are checked in in Panama, and we've uh, exceeded about $10 million worth of real estate sales in the half acre parcels um, in that period of time. So the model works, and we're comfortable with the model. We know how to run the model. We know how to acquire the farms. We know how to identify the farms. We know how to identify the product. Um, we know how to build the team and, and who's necessary and how to capitalize on the opportunity. So we have now over the last couple of years, we had our eye firmly on Belize uh, as an expansion area, geographic expansion for our owners, um, diversification in the country and various risks that are associated with country risk, um, and have identified chocolate as the next best, maybe even better, um, opportunity than specialty coffee. The supply and demand characteristics of chocolate, gourmet chocolate in particular, are astounding. Uh, the numbers are the demand is exploding around the world for people who want chocolate for all of a sudden good health benefits and all kinds of other reasons, but great taste as well. And that gourmet and even candy chocolate business is booming. And the supply of the basic component of chocolate, which is cacao or cocoa, um, is in very low supply. There's very little fine flavored organic cacao in the world. The difference being the same as coffee, the Folgers can, or a specialty coffee bag, a coffee you pay 25 or 30 bucks for versus fine flavored organic cacao that you will pay huge amounts of money for if you're a, a, a chocolate processor, particularly a gourmet processor, versus the commercial cacao or chocolate that is produced around the world. The problem with the commercial cacao is that it is mostly comes from the Ivory Coast, Niger, and Nigeria, uh, not the most stable countries in the world, and a very large portion of that is, is created by child and or slave labor. And none of that fits into our business model. We are all about a sustainable passive income from a socially sustainable method and program that develops these products. So we've identified cacao as the basic component of chocolate as the next best thing. And we're moving forward to do that right now. And chocolate is, an enor as you mentioned, an enormous industry, too. That's over $98 billion. Another $100 billion industry. Yep. It's enormous. <laughs> now, what is the difference between the business model that you guys have established uh, with the coffee farms in Panama and Colombia and the business model that you guys are taking to Belize? Substantially, if you've read our information before about international coffee farms or heard us talk on this podcast, um, then you can really you can actually do a global search and replace. Take coffee out, put cacao in, and you pretty well got the deal. It's pretty well the same. But there are a few little nuances that are different here. We're going to add a couple of revenue streams to this program beyond just simply farming. And those revenue streams, which include farming cacao or farming the basic ingredient that is sold for chocolate worldwide, whether it be candy or gourmet chocolate, the farming operation is included. Um, the trading, a trading operation is also included. There's a large opportunity in Belize to not only grow our own cacao and sell that cacao into the market uh, for chocolate users, chocolate manufacturers, but there's also a large market for us to trade by buying 
what they call wet beans and then dry, fermenting and drying those beans and selling those beans to other third party people around the world um, from Belize. Belize has a worldwide reputation for very, very high quality cacao, fine flavored organic cacao. Their only problem is they can't produce enough. The demand is way exceeds their supply. They need what we offer in our business model, which is capital, crop science, in this case, cacao science, good management. Basic tenets of business that don't get applied to the cacao business in any way, shape, or form as well as it is applied to in the coffee business. This change or disruption was needed in the coffee business. Here, it is absolutely essential for the cacao business in uh, in Belize. So we'll add the trading business to the farming business so we can then buy wet cacao from all the other farmers other than ourselves and produce a profit by trading that commodity uh, properly. Third and very, very unique and very cool, I might add, is a gourmet chocolate business called Mahogany Chocolate. And that business opportunity, which will be located in Ambergris Key in San, on the, in San Pedro and Belize, and I think a lot of people have heard about Ambergris Key in Belize lately as a very, very high in-demand retirement destination, holiday destination, uh, top island in the world to visit for tourism, top island in the world to, to um, retire on from numerous publications. We have been able to take advantage of the opportunity of hooking up with Mahogany Bay Village in um, Ambergris Key, and they have developed a hotel resort, four-star hotel resort, that is the first four-star hotel resort in Belize, and it is branded with the Hilton Hotel chain. So they have a very huge audience of people that are Hilton members and travelers around the world, plus the regular people from the public that will be attending, will be using this hotel facility, which will be 305 rooms when it's fully developed um, a couple of years down the road. We have the ability to, the opportunity to open a gourmet five-star chocolate store in the downtown village of this resort. So we're taking that opportunity. The building is leased. The, um, Equipment has been bought from Italy, England, United States, South Korea, all over the world. We've been shopping for the very highest quality chocolate manufacturing equipment. We've we've come together with an experienced Cordon Bleu chef, graduate chef, who has chocolate experience. His name is Joshua Parker, and he will be our executive chocolatier running the mahogany chocolate business. So we have a very, very strong opportunity to be able to provide very high-end artisanal chocolate to a very qualified market of Hilton resort visitors that are going to be paying $200, $300, $400, $500 a night for their room and are definitely chocolate connoisseurs. So those three streams are what's really different this time. All the deeds are the same, the drinky management's the same, the passive income's the same, the returns around 11 or 12 percent on an average annual yield, a pro forma, uh, that's about the same, the social sustainability is the same, uh, we have a hundred billion dollar product that's already proven, everybody likes chocolate, all we've done is add a couple of revenue streams to this to sweeten the pot. Well, that's really exciting stuff, and you guys are... Uh, again, th th your management is fantastic, and obviously partnering with people such as this chocolatier connoisseur, it's really, really exciting. Uh, now, David, let's talk about Belize for a second. Uh, can you share a little bit about the business environment? What is their attitude towards private property? And th you've mentioned that the investors are holding title to their parcels the same as in the opportunity in Panama? Yes, the deed is in their own name, or the name of the entity that they choose to hold it in. Uh, property rights are the same uh, back, uh, same as they are in North America or here in Panama. Everybody is allowed to own the property. The government has all of the regulations, rules in place. There's no, there's rule of law. Everything is in place. Uh, it's been a British colony for hundreds of years, up until 1984. It was in fact named British Honduras. Um, the British influence is still very strong there. It's an English-speaking country. British common law 
is the law there, so most people are familiar with it. It's a little different here in Panama, for example. We have Napoleonic law here, slightly different, but not much. So it has all of the basics of a, a country that is ripe for people to uh, own property in. And property has become a very big deal in Belize over the last 10 years. Many, many people have discovered the value of, of, of property there and you can buy some very inexpensive things and you can buy some million dollar condos on Ambergris Key right on the beach and anything in between. So that part looked after quite nicely. Country itself is poor. It um, needs some sort of catalyst that can generate jobs, good jobs, honest jobs in the country, long-term, well-paying jobs in the country, um, in the agricultural business. The Mayan culture there has been in the agricultural business for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and they know what they're doing when it comes to this. What they don't have is a lot of management experience. What they don't have is any capital. And I think that the application of our business model, which is the prudent application of capital along with crop science, that we call coffee science here in Panama, we'll call cacao science there, um, with the management techniques that we've proven we can operate under here in coffee, we should be able to help that country sufficiently provide sufficient jobs, training, and uh, opportunity for individual workers and their families to grow along with an industry that they've been working at for many, many years but have been doing as, as subsistence farmers. The average farmer there probably is, is producing cacao from one and a half acres to try and feed his family. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that's not going to work. So what we need to do is come in and help without disrupting any of the culture that they have. We're good at that here in Panama. We'll, we will be good at that in, in, in Belize as well. Our attitude is such that we are there to support them and a rising tide will float all boats. So everybody's going to do well. The demand so far exceeds the supply that Belize is probably only producing 15% of the cacao that they could actually supply just in fine flavored organic demand for chocolatiers around the world. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of metric tons going short every year that could easily be picked up on and, uh, and fulfilled with a little bit of capital, a little bit of elbow grease. So we're very comfortable with the British Honduras history there. Uh, the banking system is very solid. Uh, they have... Um, capital they have capital requirements that are as high if not higher than Panama so the banks are very liquid there's no issues whatsoever there for uh, capital controls or anything else they have a stable currency pegged to the US dollar um, as far as we can see and we've been doing this for looking into this country for four or five years they've got everything we need you are listening to David Sewell on the Cashflow Ninja podcast. We will be right back after a word from our sponsor. International Coffee Farms is a real estate-based specialty coffee farm ownership opportunity. You can own deeded half-acre parcels entitled already operating specialty coffee farms in Boquete, Panama. They are turnkey managed professionally on your behalf by a team of local experts with sustainable average annual income of 12% and with cash flow beginning within 12 to 15 months from the date of your parcel ownership. ICFC's mission is to own and operate specialty coffee farms in Boquete, Panama that are economically, environmentally and socially sustainable. As part of this mission, 20% of the gross profits of each farm goes towards a socially sustainable fund to improve the lives of the coffee farm workers and their families. ICFC currently owns and operates eight specialty coffee farms in Boquete, Panama, with parcels available for immediate ownership. To find out how you can become a parcel owner, visit our website at www.internationalcoffeefarms.com or call us toll-free at 877-208-7988. You've mentioned returns. Can you just cover for our new listeners, what type of return are you looking at in this new opportunity, and how is it paid, and what is the time frame that investors can expect to start receiving income from this opportunity? This is agriculture, so it's 
we're working with nature. So it's not an overnight get rich quick scheme by any means. But what we're doing is buying underperforming farms and turning them around into into well producing farms. So that takes time. Generally two to three years in the cacao business. From the time we acquire the farm, turn around a small producing farm, add more seedlings, grow them out to having a full production facility, uh, three years, you can say. So the returns start slowly, um, but they do increase fairly quickly. The startup numbers are derived from the cacao trading business and the chocolate business in, in mahogany chocolate. The farming takes a little longer. So as you put all three of those together, you get a small return in the first year, a few percent. It goes a little bit bigger in year two and year three. By the time the, the farming part kicks in, um, mahogany chocolate has had a chance to mature. The Hilton Hotel has grown beyond the startup number of rooms to its full potential at 300 homes, and we're actively trading chocolate or cacao beans bought from other farmers, the numbers kick up quite quickly. Over a 20-year period, which is the period we've calculated the internal rate of return on, which is a standard slice of time for these kind of calculations, and the same as we did here in Panama, the average annual return, or what's called an IRR, or internal rate of return, is somewhere between 11 and 12 percent. So you can expect cash flow to start uh, within 12 to 15 months of you acquiring your parcel. Again, that cash flow will start slowly. It'll come from Mahogany Chocolate and the trading company, and a little bit of production from some of the farms that we acquire that already have cacao on them, but generally that will kick in in three years when the farming operations mature. So that's a that's a uh, summary of the uh, the returns. Yeah, no, I like that. Just uh, the opportunity to build sustaining legacy wealth for you and your family that produces income. And there are, as you've shared, three income streams just in this opportunity. Now, David, what, what are some of the risks that you guys see out there? And what are some of the risk management strategies that you guys have in place? We have a little bit of a weather risk out there. They're on the western side of the Caribbean. So there's this little windy season called hurricanes. And they get them from time to time. They recently had one in the north, uh, which was a weak Category 1. But uh, as they're not a very well-built country, there's a bit more damage than we would experience in South Florida or other places, even with stronger hurricanes. But they exist mainly in the northern part of the country. The cacao is all grown in the southern part of the country. It's not that big a country, but 300, 400 miles south you know, in a hurricane makes a big difference. They haven't had one in uh, the south where the cacao industry grows since 2001. One, I think it was, and within a few years the area had recovered. But you know, that's that's a that's a, a, a natural risk that has to be accounted for. Um, there is some pestilence issues, and there are some fungus issues because this is a very hot and humid and wet area of the country. So, which is very very important: high rainfall, humidity, steam, all the rest of that for the growing of cacao. But there are pestilence issues and fungus issues that if not if the farms are not well maintained can create havoc haven't done so in the last quite a large number of years because the NGO organizations that are prevalent down there that are teaching and educating the uh, subsistence native farmers on how to do this um, have, have done a pretty good job and it really boils down to simple basic farm maintenance and farm management practices. If you clear your property and keep the underbrush down and you trim your trees so that they're the proper size and they have the proper access to wind and breeze and sun and air and water, you don't have these problems. So simple inputs equals the elimination of these, these problems. Other than that, there is very little that concerns me. The culture of growing cacao has been there for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It used to be a currency in the culture, so it's been around for a while. Um, the native Indian population, the Mayans and the Griffina, know exactly what they're doing. They know how to do this. They want to do this. They just don't have the wherewithal. 
to do this. So I think that the uh, support we've already received there, we have acquired our first three properties there. We have a 52-acre property, we have a 30-acre, 31-acre property, and a 24-acre property. Uh, And the enthusiasm we're seeing behind those other farmers that want to sell us beans in the trading business, the people who want to help us and support us in the farming business, um, gives me confidence that we have a very strong opportunity in our hands already and we can add to that the executive chocolatier Josh Parker mahogany chocolate and the Hilton experience which is a one-time opportunity that when it was offered to us we jumped on it immediately and uh, it's not going to be replaceable so you put all that together I think we got a winner that's really exciting now as far as investor education if there's listeners out there listening to to us having this conversation what should they be looking at as far as a checklist when they consider a passive income offshore uh, real estate opportunity such as this? Well, I think you want to look at a number of boxes on the Ben Franklin close, if you're going to do it on yourself. Owning the land, the security of your investment, number one. Return of your investment as opposed to just the return on your investment. And that is... I think we take care of nicely with physically deeded parcels in titled specialty cacao farms. A lot of adjectives there, but it's a deeded, physically deeded parcel of a titled specialty cacao farm. So you got the farming side, you got the ag side, you got the product side in cacao, you got the specialty side in gourmet chocolate. It's already titled. It's a not a banana republic. It was run by the British forever and ever and ever. Um, it does have very secure land titling systems in place and have had for a long time because of the British influence. So you get deeded parcels physically in a specialty product. And if you're an American listening, it's uh, it's also not reportable under current regulations in the U.S. under the FATCA regulations. It's a couple of assets that are not and uh, offshore real estate held in your own name is one of them. So it's pretty secure. Second box would be, how the heck am I going to run a cacao farm when I live in Des Moines, Iowa, or wherever? Um, so you need some competent professional turnkey operations management in place. People have done this before, know what they're doing, know how to identify farms, know how to acquire farms, know how to turn those farms around, coffee or cacao or other ag products, um, and then can be able, be able to build a team for you that you can trust to deliver what they say they're going to deliver. So that turnkey management box is a critical one as well. I would be interested in having something sustainable, that passive income that I don't have to put a lot of effort into. I would want that to be something that's sustainable. I want that in a product that's already proven, not in the widget that I have to take to the market and may or may not work, might fail, and uh, would not be able to provide me any income, period, never mind sustainable passive income. So I'm looking at the um, agricultural products that are proven, they're non-perishable, they can't be destroyed in the transit process. Um, you know when you're selling, what you, who you're selling to and what you're selling. So you have a sustainability here of a business that's so underserved when it comes to supply versus the demand that it's almost like falling off a log to get the uh, product to the market. Um, so that sustainability is a number uh, one thing I would like to do. Um, and then on top of that, I think I'd like to be socially and econo- uh, environmentally responsible. And so I want to give back to others from what, I, what I've been able to gain for myself. And the satisfaction of knowing your investment capital is directly improving the lives of these impoverished Belize cacao farmers and other people that work in the industry, not just the uh, cacao farmers, but you know, fairly low-paid uh, chocolate industry employees. We provide them good, honest work, and honest is a key phrase in Belize and other countries that have had work related jobs that have not necessarily been in desirable products, if you know what I mean. Um, provide them a living wage, um, give them medical and pension benefits, you know, and assist them in their living conditions and other things necessary, their education, put the kids in school, give them, provide them some upward mobility. So if you can tick all those boxes off on an investment that's got a reasonable rate of return, um, and you're comfortable with the people that are offering it, you come down and kick the trees, as we call it, see what we're all about, Panama, 
Belize or wherever, I think you have a comfortable legacy opportunity here. We're not interested in people that are looking to get rich quick. It's not a farm flipping opportunity. Um, it's a patient, long-term investment, five to seven years at least uh, up front before you're going to start to see really good returns. And anytime you bail out before then, then the capital you put in that's being involved in these turnarounds just doesn't get a chance to come to fruition. So you shouldn't do this. Um, you can do it as a legacy investment for yourself. You're a millennial. You got long time for investment returns if you're um, not a millennial and you're like me and you're 66 years old and you have seven grandkids and you want to put uh, a parcel in each of your grandkids names it's cool it works out well it's a legacy investment for yourself your family and your heirs so you should come to it with that kind of a, a time frame and an attitude and i think you'll be pretty happy a fantastic opportunity to build generational wealth and a great checklist, by the way. Thank you for sharing that. And when we look at the information age and, and, and we look at the times that, that we live in, we've talked about on the show that the only way that you're going to be able to achieve financial security for yourself and your family is creating income streams across different asset classes uh, to get that monthly income streams. And that income streams that are sustainable and coffee and chocolate specialty and high quality is definitely not going away. David, where can uh, listeners find out more information about this opportunities and about the tours that you guys do? Um, where, where can they find more information on this? They can go to the website, which is probably the best place to be able to go uh, for the information. And on the website, you will find growing and developing information from the business and from our acquisitions of farms and where they are and what we're doing and the progress of the farms, how we're building our depots, how we're buying our, our beans, um, how we dry and ferment beans, all of the things that you could want to learn about a very exciting industry, the um, the cacao industry. Um, on, the, on the website, there'll be photos and all kinds of things that you can familiarize yourself with. Um, also, a getting started button on the site and the getting started button, if you click on it and uh, fill in a little bit of your own information, we'll send you in an automated fashion an introductory email telling you about the program and how it all works uh, and automatically you'll get our 16 page uh, frequently asked questions style of a brochure that pretty well answers every question you could ever ask for. Now, any question you've, we've been asked in the last four years over all of these farms we've bought and developed, we've taken those questions and answered them as best we can in this brochure. And that brochure uh, will give you virtually everything you need to know. If you want to go any further, you, you contact us directly by email. Um, we won't be contacting you. Uh, we're not interested in, in bothering you. You have the information. Everybody knows what they're doing when it comes to their investments and their philosophies and their strategies. And if it makes sense to you, get a hold of us. And we'll then go on from there, add a lot more information to it. Um, and you'll be able to take advantage of our nine or ten page um, cacao farming ownership opportunity report which has quite a bit of information in detail in it and you'll get access to the uh, confidential pro forma financial information so you can dig into the numbers to make your your decision so the website is www.belizecacaoconsortium.com and I will put links to that on our show notes for this episode um, that you guys can visit to and uh, get all that information about this fantastic opportunity. David, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure having you on again and uh, just sharing this uh, information and this education and information about this opportunity. It's been a blast. I really appreciate the time. Thank you very much and have a great day. Coffee is a proven product and a $90 billion industry worldwide. Through International Coffee Farms, you now have a chance to own your own half-acre parcels in a specialty coffee farm in Panama, professionally turnkey managed for you. This is David Sewell, the founder of International Coffee Farms. Contact us today or visit our website at www.internationalcoffeefarms.com. You can download your free 16-page coffee farm ownership opportunity report. 
Thank you for joining my guest, David Sewell, and myself on the Cashflow Ninja podcast today. If you want more information on the Belize income opportunity that David discussed, you can download your free report at cashflowninja.com forward slash Belize. If you like what you hear and appreciate what we're trying to build here at the Cashflow Ninja, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes, and share our show with family, friends, and your network. I really have been humbled by your support and feedback, and if there's any way that I could provide more value to you and serve you better, please reach out to me at info at cashflowninja.com. Jimmy Freeland and Bob Scott have been in your shoes and have used real estate investing to become financially free. They have designed a system to take any beginner to an experienced deal-making investor in the least amount of time. They offer opportunities from basic education, coaching, bridge investing, to turnkey investments in the cash flowing market of St. Louis, Missouri. For more information, please visit joinopsproperties.com or call Jimmy and Bob at 314-799-2247. That's our show for today, everyone. Until next time, live a life of passion and purpose on your terms. You have been listening to the Cash Flow Ninja with your host, MC Laubscher, the podcast empowering and inspiring people to discover how to generate their own income and manage, grow, and protect their own wealth in the new economy. Today's show notes and resources are available on our website, CashflowNinja.com. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals, and you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objective, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness. 